I want to get married. I want to marry you. But if you're going to be stressed out and like bridezilla about this wedding, I'm out. Okay, with my dress, my mom, my grandma, and I all sewed on it. It was $100 for the fabric. We did so many activities, like we were just hemorrhaging cash. What should you be thinking about when you're getting ready for your wedding? Mm, I mean, yes, it's fine to think about some of the little details and stuff, but you're preparing for a marriage. Right. Not just a wedding, so. But we did rock cotton candy. candy. Rock candy? Yeah. We did cotton candy. Because but yeah. love is strong. <laughs> oh my, love. <laughs> love is fluffy. <laughs> and if it doesn't seem compatible to you that Mennonites would have bachelorette parties, just remember we hold marriage and family very highly. I was very actually grateful for the rules because it ended up saving us money. I, I did. love I'm, it. I legit was baking the That's morning of my so wedding. Funny. If you're not married yet, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a Mennonite wedding. They're cheaper. <laughs>
waiting for snow just so I can eat that again. So anyway, I'll put the ratios down below. Hardly really a recipe again, but. <laughs> I remember my mom making that. It's good memories. With the coffee? No, just yeah. regular snow. Oh yeah, I make it for my kids every year. Well, I also taught second grade, so I think we often made it at school too. I think too. I made it for my kids, but it's been so long. I yeah. have to make sure. I'm it snows it every snow. year usually, but not usually till January. Yeah. And like this year, it's just been warmer, which I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, should we get into the questions? Yes. Yes. Is this going to be edifying in any way or just well, fascinating and interesting? Well, that's what I was thinking about, but I think we can have some I think you're going to feel pearls some, of wisdom. Yeah, there's going to be some themes of less is more sometimes, and it's not necessarily about the fancy dress, the jewelry, yeah. the little, the, the worldly trappings. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the feeling of the day for sure. So my wedding, we got engaged over Christmas time, um... And then we got married the following August. So we had a nice long engagement. It's probably longer than we would have needed, but we didn't know housing situations or anything. So gave ourselves plenty of time. Um, and I remember the day we got engaged or the same weekend, very shortly after we got engaged, Eric looked at me and he's like, look, I want to get married. I want to marry you. But if you're going to be stressed out and like bridezilla about this wedding, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's fair, you know? So I guess it was my goal, our goal, throughout the whole wedding planning to just keep things stress-free, simple. And I felt like we really tried to focus on people while planning our wedding, tried to like make it special for our guests, make it special for our families, for us. So I felt like I did really keep my end of the deal with that. We, I mean, it was kind of a commitment that I made. And I, I as maybe... I, we talked before about our dating stories. Maybe my dating situation standards, maybe I wasn't quite as good with those as I wanted to be, but our wedding, I'm very proud of. Aww. Very proud of our wedding and the attitudes that we had. And yeah, so go ahead with yours. I was just going to say, I remember for, you got married like a year and a couple months before me. And I remember when it was time for me to plan my wedding, my mom's like, well... You really don't have to think too hard. Just copy everything Jaina did oh. and you're good to go. <laughs> she thought you looked so comfortable and I like was. classy in your wedding yeah. dress. And that's how she thought mine should be. And I went like totally opposite. Yeah. But Oh, man. Um, I guess I was just thinking about it. We did our dating story video. Definitely watch that one if you haven't. It was very fun. We never really talked proposal. And we're probably not going to do that in this video either. So let us know if you'd like to hear some more details about how we got engaged. Did um, we not tell proposal stories? No, I, no? Okay. I don't remember telling mine anyway. Okay. Um, that could be fun sometime, yeah. like mixed in with something else. I don't know. Um, but we won't touch on that too much today. But we were dating, like you guys were like ninth grade sweethearts right on up through. Yeah. But we only started dating when I was 18. So all in all, it was two years, seven months and 20 days. <laughs> I don't know why my brain <laughs> keeps track of stuff like that. And that's what we needed that whole time because Josh settled, had a settlement on our house the day he proposed to me. So that whole yeah. time he was trying to fix up a fixer upper. So I would say that the seven months was a good amount for me, but I have friends that got married in four months. And yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it, but also then we had time to get the house figured out. And right. for you guys, you were shopping for a house. So yeah, I mean, we had eight months and we didn't know, we didn't know if we would get a yeah. fixer up or not. We knew nothing. And we ended up buying a house that we basically just did some painting and that was it. We didn't need near all that. And we found a house pretty quickly. So we had like five months that we we're ready to I go. remember that your house was like a museum and you're like, yeah, everything's in the cupboard, just yeah. waiting to go. And there's a whole month till the wedding yet. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't have needed that time. But also he had a brother that was on mission work and his parents really wanted us to wait until he could come home, which made sense. So May yeah, it just a worked wonderful out. wonderful time to get married, right? May? May? I think August. I May. August. Yeah. August. Oh, your birthday. May's May. my birthday. Yeah. Or both okay. of our birthdays. Yeah. August. Yeah. So you got married in August and we got married in July. So summer, yeah, weddings. summer weddings. That factors in a little bit, I guess. Yeah. We both wanted to be tan. <laughs> yeah. okay. So one of the main themes that I thought we could have just address right away from the questions was financial questions. Like how much did things cost? How much did your dress cost? Um, who paid for what? So this is just from my experience. And I think overall, most of the time, like the reception costs are split between bride and groom's parents. Yeah. Like, like I was not responsible. That wasn't out of my pocket. Yeah. I think Although my, my mom said, if I want extras, I have to pay for them. So I paid for my flowers. Right. That was 2000 bucks. You said not even close for you, right? No, I don't think so. I 
I remember that flowers was one of my biggest expenses, and I think my bouquet was like three hundred dollars, which I thought was outrageous, but I, I I really really wanted it. Yeah, you had real roses. I had some flowers in there that I just really wanted. I don't know why. Like I'm not even like a, I just I don't know. I just <laughs> did wanted... you save it? Do you have it? Still? No, no. Um, but then my the we didn't have any other real flowers besides bouquets. And boutonnieres. Oh, for the decor. So, yeah, we didn't have any real flowers anywhere else. So I think I probably spent less than a thousand okay. total. Flowers, See, that was the difference. I don't remember for sure, and I couldn't find any documentation, but. I did want to say, if you guys want to see pictures, you're going to have to go follow us over on Honey, I'm Homemaker. We're going to do a whole spamming. Yeah, I need to we'll try to do it, it the same day that this video goes out, and then maybe save it in a highlight bubble um, of just like a bunch of our wedding pictures. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you'll get to see some of that. But anyway, so. If, Actually, my biggest expense was my photographer, and she was two thousand two hundred. This is in twenty thirteen, and that she was like a middle of the road price. Okay, like some people paid more and some people paid less. So my photography situation, we had Eric's sister do them. So she did like all the posed pictures of the bridal party and the family, and of us, and I think we paid like four hundred ish. <laughs> but then we did not have any professional photos at the actual wedding ceremony or the reception which I do kind of regret that but like it just was not in the budget and we had some like people take some snapshots and stuff so we have some pictures they're just not great but yeah that's one thing I some people ask about regrets that's one thing that maybe I could have tried to have a little bit of a better photographer situation I love the pictures that his sister took I just don't have the actual wedding but on the other hand uh, we're not allowed to have pictures, photographers in the church. I was going to say, I have some drama so, here, but that's, yeah, yeah, so exactly. like we're not allowed. That's when, that's why I decided not to hire a professional. I mean, Diane's a professional, but she didn't want to take pictures in the of the wedding because she was a family member and she wanted to enjoy the wedding, which I completely agreed with. So we just decided not to because we, we weren't supposed to anyway. Like they weren't allowed to go in the sanctuary. So and the lighting that has is... changed, I think. I've been to plenty of not at my weddings. church. Okay, well, yeah, I was not allowed to. Ha- That's my biggest regret. Like, I have no wedding video, and I could cry. Like, my whole life's on. Okay, not really. But, oh, I didn't really. Like, care I want a wedding that. video. Like, I want to see my little self. Yeah. Like, and then the reception was at Yoder's, so like lighting is terrible, and like we didn't spend much on decorations. So all in all, like, I, uh, think... I could cry for you just hearing this. I like, I would spend double just to have all the. I want yeah. all the pictures, all the documentation. I wish I had like Polaroid. Yeah, pictures like I'm and... saying, if I have a regret, it's that. <laughs> but like in the grand scheme of things, I'm. I love the pictures that we have like the ones that we took we took them at Stalsburg Village and I love those they're so cute yeah, yeah. You, guys will see, you guys will see yeah so my wedding dress my mom made and I think it was less than a hundred dollars with supplies she has like all the receipts and stuff and I think yeah. it was 94 dollars and then the bridesmaids dresses were mi- very minimal she also made them or they made their own or, and she made some of them so table decorations were minimal I was going to say, with my dress, my mom, my grandma, and I all sewed on it. It was $100 for the fabric. I was, like, balling. That was, like, very expensive. And then the labor was free. Right. <laughs> you know, but I had, like, a pretty brooch. It was, like, 12 bucks or something. You Me know, too. Fake, fake pearls on it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I had, like, a vintage brooch that I brooched uh, that I, I probably got. probably copied Jada. <laughs> honored. But, yeah, I feel like oh, – and the reception, I can – I found the receipt for that. So that was like 3900 which they split. And that was definitely by far the biggest expense because the church was free. Um, like I said, we spent minimal on photography and flowers. And then the rest was just like little stuff, like $100 here, $30 there, honestly. This is my wedding – planning book I happened to find up in the attic but I was privileged enough to have my great aunt owned a bridal uh rental store and she was trying to get into the shabby chic look like before this everybody had done like classic weddings if you know what I mean like the pearls the tiaras the satin wedding dresses Mm -hmm. and stuff and I feel like right around the time me and you got married was when like the lace and the burlap and all the shabby chic stuff yeah mine was definitely not that like Like, my wedding cake was on a barrel yeah our arch that we walked under which was a drama in itself because some people didn't like that we had an arch at the reception but our the arch that we walked under was made out of (laughs) stepladders which fit really well with our style because I did old books because I was a school teacher and then I did lots of like wooden crates and wooden stuff because Josh was into construction. Um, We had like pictures on old wooden doors. My mom actually like refurbished a whole bunch of old wooden doors that she still has in the basement. Um, But yeah, so my mom ended up spending 
we had to rent everything because we didn't go to a wedding reception place. Yeah. It was just like that empty like place. And so um, I wanted to have a barn wedding so bad. And my dad like said, absolutely not. He's like, I have no opinions about weddings, but you're not going to have a July barn wedding. So I didn't get that, but my sister did a couple years later. So, but yeah, my mom spent like 3,800 on all the, the rental stuff. Hold it. Like, I know, but she said that was cheaper that way than actually, because the food was cheaper going through the, like the yes, conservative but my Mennonite parents spent place. 3,900 for... Oh, wait, what did I say? 1,300. Oh. I said 3,000. No, 1,350. That's ridiculous. That's with like, renting all the, like, table linens and, okay. like, burlap and lace. Yeah, we and, didn't have yeah, to get so any of that. 1,300, and that was, like, a lot, I thought. Anyway, I couldn't believe that she was letting me... I guess she wanted me to have a pretty wedding. I don't know. <laughs> she just did whatever you told her to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> At the end of the day, I still had to end up spending more, I guess, because of the photographer in the florist. But my cake was $108 from our... Um, Aunt in law or whatever. Aunt in law. Steph's mom. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. She's not your aunt. She's your like cousin. Second cousin's mom. My dad's cousin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's one nice thing about being a Mennonite. You pretty much have a relative for everything. That's, yeah, yeah. My cake came free with Yoder's banquet. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you eat your cake a year later? No. We did. We kept our top layer, which was red velvet swirl, and we ate it a year later, and it was sure so good. i sure we did not. Our cake was not that great. It looked nice. It was like, it looked like lace. Like, it was all white with, like, lace detailing on it, and then it had pink flowers stuck in it. I'm trying to decide if people want to hear about, like, the details. Probably of our, not. Probably not, because it's so outdated, and so, yeah. like, I wouldn't change it or whatever, no, because no. that's what was in back then and what I liked, but at what the same time. What were your time, colors? Um, blue. Uh, bridesmaids were, like, a Tiffany blue. Except my maid of honor wore like a more pigmented, brighter turquoise blue, greeny kind so of. So very similar to what mine was because we had also like blue. But my accent was more like yellow. Yeah, and mine was hot pink. Yeah, so it was kind of different. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. back in the day, I guess people did brighter colors. Actually, yeah. muted tones were just coming in kind of. So that was the inspiration with the yeah. Tiffany blue, I guess. But whatever. I mean, it's been 10 years now. So yeah, times have changed. Okay, let's see what, let's talk about what the people want to hear. Well, Let's, they wanted to hear the money. I guess that was... Yeah, that yeah. was... Oh, we can talk about our honeymoon prices. Our honeymoon was all, all expense paid for 14 days. And we loved it. Like, 14 days. We were like, everybody should go for 14 days. And most people just go for seven. But it was six grand. Which we could have definitely gotten a better deal, I think, feel like. Like, that was, that was like 10 that years much. ago. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a lot. I don't think it sounds I don't like know. a It was a really gorgeous resort, though, but we went through a travel agent, so I'm sure we could have yeah. done it cheaper on our own, but we had never traveled out of the country before, right. except for mission stuff. So. so we went to the Dominican Republic for a week, and I do not remember how much we paid, but actually I do. I think our plane tickets were right around $800 each, I think, and then we paid $50 per person per day for all-inclusive. At the resort, that's and then it. that's wow. it because we used Eric's parents let us use their travel. What do you call it? Vouchers a timeshare or... type oh. thing. So they had points at a timeshare, so we were able to use them, which helped us out quite a bit. And we stayed at a very nice resort. At least I thought it was very nice and had a wonderful time. So yeah, even so, it was like, seven days enough. I remember feeling teary when we left, but then by the time we were headed back, I was ready to like start okay. real life. I, that's always but exciting. I think we, I think fourteen days honestly would have been great although we did so many activities like we were just hemorrhaging cash like we took all the cash we got from our (laughs) wedding cards like we on the way to the airport we like raided the cards and got all the cash and spent every dollar on activities on our honeymoon (laughs) we you're gonna laugh you're gonna be like this is so megan we the only thing we splurged on was we did a zip lining trip the one day but we spent like a hundred and some dollars for like a half an hour photo shoot on the beach really yes like they had us like i don't know and those pictures are still some of my favorite to that's this day. cool like they had us holding the sun as it was setting over the water oh, do you remember and, like, seeing that picture he was like dipping me in the sunset and like we got oh, pictures that's cool. it was so fun yeah. anyway but it was ridiculously expensive like yeah. 20 dollars per like we had to pay 100 dollars for the cd so we could do whatever we wanted yeah. but then we thought that's just crazy expensive but anyway yeah we did like- everything dune buggies jet skis I think we did jet skis on our honeymoon. Yes. Parasailing, we, catamaran, uh, cruise, snorkeling. We water skied every day because that was included. Yeah, we didn't do that. I yeah. Don't I don't think honeymoons are that much different in the Mennonite no, world versus, I, don't, no. I mean. Same, same, I would say. Probably more special yet because we haven't been living together beforehand, maybe. Exactly. But <laughs> yeah. 
oh, did you kiss during the ceremony or after? Ooh. There is no kissing. That wasn't an option for us. No. Although my sister thinks she's going to in a month here. There was n- there's no kissing <laughs> in a Mennonite wedding ceremony. We ran, like, after your pronounced man and wife, we very hurriedly ran out the back and we kissed when we were, like, out. Like, in the church still, but, like, out in the foyer where no one could see. Oh, we kissed 20 days before our wedding or something. But that was not that the, was the first, first time. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, at the wedding. Like, that yeah. was our first kiss after we were married. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. not our first kiss. I don't regret kissing before our wedding at all. Right, we're not talking about that um, today. Oh, yes, that's right. We already talked about that. Yes. But, yeah, no, I didn't. I would I would actually have. I hated taking pictures, like, and having to kiss in front of my bridal party. I didn't like that. So I could Oh, that's it didn't bother us. I would despise it, I think, for the I, I don't know. I feel, yeah. That's not something that's done. If we're like, if there's Mennonites, like conservative to less conservative, one through ten, we're probably about like seven. So eight, nine, and ten all kiss at at the. Okay, well, I don't know that that's necessarily true. I think we would be more like a five or four on conservative level, especially like when we got married. Now we've both changed a little bit since then. I still go to the same church, but I wore a cape wedding dress. You wore a cape wedding dress. That's, so five. Yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty conservative. So yes, yeah. we are coming from a fairly conservative wedding background, I would say. Yeah. We, yeah. We had a lot of stipulations. I wasn't allowed to have lace on my wedding dress, but I had like an embroidery. I, I was probably pushing the rules a little bit. I had like embroidered like fabric or whatever. That's the other thing I wanted to say um, to praise myself. <laughs> Um, I pushed no rules. Like, I tend to be maybe a rule pusher. Not not necessarily. You were also marrying into a way more conservative family. Right. But, like, I was very actually grateful for the rules because it ended up saving us money and and stress. Because, like I said before, the whole goal of this wedding planning was to not be stressed. So the rules actually, like, really worked in my favor and I embraced them. Oh, not allowed to do that. Well, that's something I can cross off the list. <laughs> so I, don't, I did not push any rules. None. Yeah, we I mean, both at least married, not that I was aware of, and we both got married for free at the, our home churches. So right, that, that didn't cost any money. Yeah, and actually, my mom told me, you know, after the wedding, that so many people came up to her and just said that they appreciated our wedding, they loved it, they felt like it was. I don't, I don't want to quote exact words because, I, but just the general feel was that it wasn't a production. It or wasn't like a production. A show. It was genuine. We seemed happy and not stressed. And it was like, about the people. It, it was about the people. It was about God. It wasn't about showing off. And yeah, I just have a lot of good feelings from our wedding and very, very few regrets. So, what do the folks want to know? Yeah, they want to know about ring ceremonies. But we don't wear rings, so there's no ring ceremonies. Some people will do like. A unity candle or pouring sand or stuff like that. But we did not do any of that. Yeah. Actually, this is interesting. I'm not speaking for all. We're speaking. We should have put this disclaimer I know, in the beginning. I was, yeah. We're speaking from our own experiences and blah, blah, blah. And, and what from Lancaster seen, County. In and Lancaster our experiences County. as Going guests, to weddings, too. Yes. We've gone to so many weddings. Yes. yes. So many weddings. But in other areas, there's Mennonites that wear rings. Around here, if you're wearing a head covering, you're probably not wearing a wedding ring. Like, that's not no. culturally done at all around here. Not really. No. Like, I can pretty much say 90 per, 99% in Lancaster County, like, a wedding ring and a head covering are not usually, like, Yeah, compatible. there might be, like, a very – yeah, there might be some, but not many. Yeah, and then it's, like, a church that doesn't really probably have, like, all the guidelines and boundaries. Yeah. So you can kind of just do your own thing. Yeah. So – So no wedding – No wedding rings. And ceremony, we can get – we can ceremony. talk about – the whys of that, but not in this podcast because I feel like that's a whole other... That's a whole other topic, yeah. yeah. So, no wedding rings, no wedding rings. No judgment ceremonies. if you have a wedding ring, oh, but... Oh, yeah, absolutely not, but that's... We're... Yeah. Okay. Um, There's no set budget. Like, there's no rules that says you can't spend a certain amount. No. But we are encouraged to have simple weddings. There's a lot of rules that kind of make it, like so that things aren't as lavish that you're like at least when I was getting married you were not allowed to like drive away in a getaway car that was like crazy like sporty or like super expensive and lavish um so like a lot of people would just like get all their friends with their shiniest nicest trucks and line them all up in the front or like old cars did your guy your guy's a car guy so did he do yeah cool we cars? had black Volkswagens or Volkswagens I think I don't know if they That's were right. all he was black. a guy yeah. yeah so nothing fancy I mean they thought they were fancy but they were yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, okay. you could spend as much money as you wanted on food. You could have steak and like yeah. whatever. Although that's encouraged. The Mennonites <laughs> in Canada have lavish food really? compared to Lancaster County. Okay, I was yeah. never at a Canadian wedding. Okay, there is no, I have never seen a bouquet toss at a Mennonite wedding. 
Nope. Have Actually, you? You, we are not allowed to, at my church, we were not even allowed to take our flowers into the sanctuary. No flowers in the sanctuary. They're just at the reception. We had, we had flowers all over the place at my reception. And then we held them for the f- pictures, like the bridal party right. pictures and stuff. But yeah, that was not allowed in the ceremony at all. So, so I was allowed to carry bouquets. We carried bouquets into the sanctuary for the ceremony, but there was no decorations other than that. Like no pew yeah arrangements no windows so nothing nothing in the actual church just what we could. and that does vary like there's certain churches yeah that, that's, that's very fine. church specific um there's no garter tradition <laughs> actually our parents were came from an even more conservative background than we did and my mom did the garter did she <laughs> she wore it um and then she had it like she kept it with her wedding album and stuff but but she just wore it she didn't have like what they do like the best man take it off or something they didn't no, they didn't do that part, but they did have the whole, like, shake the naughtiness out of the bride, shake her upside down, and then they also threw the groom over the fence. Okay. But my mom had a garter. I don't know if she wore it the whole day or if it was more just, like, a fun little thing. I have that no idea. That is funny. Okay, let me see what else we got here. But no, no garter. Okay, please press. describe the wedding ceremony. So. A uh, long, long compared it's to what like you're church. used to. Yeah, yeah, like, there's a sermon, there's. Well, Devotions. first, before that, even, there's, like, the whole family has to get down the there's aisle. There's processions. There's acapella singing in the background. Yeah. And families are big, usually, so it's, like, except yeah. me, you're both the oldest, so I guess. It's very, like, yeah. um, somber, I would say, overall. Yeah. I mean, I actually, there's some Mennonite groups that their weddings literally don't feel much different from a funeral in some ways. Like, yes. they're very... S- sober somber sober yeah. like they marry you and then you sit there and listen to other preachers talk for a while before you even go out of the yeah you know so that wasn't like that like i felt like it was a joyful day the sermons like i feel like the mennonite preachers put a lot of thought into their sermons they their do. wedding sermons are usually very like either object lessony or very like funny yeah, i don't know yeah. i feel like there's I've a, lot heard of, a lot of humor yeah. um and like personal tidbits from the bride you, you want to pick a preacher that knows you kind of so you can like make fun of the groom and stuff yeah. like that yeah so pretty much just like a church service basically singing and preaching yeah and oh that's a, that's that's kind of an expense you pay all your um like we had eight people singing a cappella and like four you parts. know what come to think of it that was our biggest expense actually that Giving, we had to tell you was gifts gifts for the people that had special parts we and we were like determined we were not going to cheap out on that yeah. like but the, you also gifted all your bridesmaids their dress and stuff too right so yeah like that I, would add some cost. I, I mean i paid for them to get their nails done their dress was covered. Um, obviously, I paid for their flowers. I pretty much paid for everything for them. And then I don't remember if I got them another gift besides that or not. I did not do the whole, will you be my bridesmaid? Here's a gift thing. I would think that would be so cute, but I did not. My girl's like, okay. So I had already no, like I had already asked them. This was actually on our bachelorette party, which brings up another topic we wanted yeah, to discuss. Yeah, my word. But I had like <laughs> these little rings and I like, I think I like maybe rings? no, yeah, like cheapo Walmart rings. And I'm like, will you be my maid of honor? Will you be my bridesmaid? It was so cheesy and it was hilarious. Oh, that's fun. It was just a joke, everybody. but it was so funny. And the other day, Milo came over and he had this like big chunky ring. Milo, your nephew. My nephew. And I was like, that looks so familiar. And I realized it was the ring that I had gave to Joelle. Did he just Walmart? Yeah, and she still has it. Oh, that's funny. But yes, speaking of bachelorette parties. Why can't Mennonites have bachelor parties? I know. It's I was like so the heated debate. That too. I posted a reel on Instagram of my sister's bachelor party, and people were like, "That is not a Mennonite thing." I don't know what you guys expect. Do you think it was because you like, had a, be- 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 a <laughs> beverage and you clinked your glasses, uh, and people I, assumed it was alcohol? I did. Ha- like one of the first comments though was something about, "Wow, I didn't know Mennonites knew how to party," and I said. You can still have fun without the alcohol. So I think it was pretty clear that there wasn't alcohol. That was just like sparkling strawberry grape juice yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I don't know what people were hung up about. But yes, traditionally, we Mennonites do have bachelorette it's parties. It's not going clubbing or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, but I mean, we went to the beach and there was zero alcohol because number one, we, we were, were old, old enough. <laughs> yeah, we weren't old enough. Actually, I don't think, well, I might have been 21. But yeah, there was no drinking. There was no clubbing. There was no stripping no there was just actually the worst thing that happened was like our friends would buy each other like lingerie yes for that, the bride. that's but what we did yeah. i would never have modeled it trust me like i don't think i modeled it either <laughs> i think the thing people were curious about was that for my sisters it was in the winter and we rented a limo but like honestly i spent 109 dollars for that whole evening and that was with part of her cut in there and we didn't like people travel and like fly to yeah like for bachelor not Mennonites but I'm saying like I feel like we do a very tasteful very fiscally responsible bachelorette yeah, yeah type we did of like thing. a weekend in Cape May and the traditionally the 
maid of honor and bridesmaids plan it and like i didn't even know where we were going um, yeah so and we if it doesn't there. seem compatible to you that mennonites would have bachelorette parties just remember we hold marriage and family very highly so i feel like it's fun like it's a fun part of the celebration of you know going yeah. from a girl to a married woman you yeah know? yeah it's yeah it's anyway. very fun can we have a long veil music with instruments take a honeymoon i mean no we trains, would not have a veil no, no trains um some more liberal mennonites would have those things yeah yeah we did not neither of us did um we did not have music except for acapella singing in our wedding ceremony now at our reception you played the piano and my sister sang which at the reception at the reception yeah Yeah. the reception is just like a party it's not really church sanctioned i don't think my church has any rules for the reception i mean as long as you're like yeah mennonites can be kind of confusing because like the plainer groups actually like have rules that you mean not even wear a white wedding dress it has to be like oh yeah someone um, a bunch of people asked that too they kept saying like black like mennonites wear black wedding dresses which i'm not i've never heard of that no i never just like the one group can't have white or cream or tan it has to be like blue or gray yeah but not black no and then also the that same group of people like the really conservative even some that like drive horse and buggies and stuff but then they will have like wine at their reception right so it's like kind of confusing yeah, there's a lot of different things that kind of cross lines. Like the more conservative ones might not be as conservative in some ways. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're talking a lot about roles and guidelines and stuff here. The heart behind everything is not just to be legalistic. It's just to like keep things more simple and like not so lavish. And like what should you be thinking about when you're getting ready for your wedding? Mm, I mean, yes, it's fine to think about some of the little details and stuff, but you're preparing for a marriage. Right. Not just a wedding. So like we would have went to a um, marriage boot camp not that i mean i don't know it was like a weekend thing but we didn't we went home at night and then came back again it was just like a lot of like discussing talking through things how do you spend money um i think we got a little bit of like sex ed <laughs> yeah from the fun preacher's wife and it wasn't anything i didn't know already but we didn't do that we had marital premarital counseling with like your own church. two on one with um our pastor yeah, someone had asked about that setting. too so yes most of us would go through some sort of either like some people do engagement, engaged encounter. You know what? There's probably other groups that are not Mennonite that have heard of engaged encounter. Yeah, brethren do that. So they go there too. But we chose not to do that again because our church didn't pay for it and we were poor. <laughs> so we did the free counseling through the church. And yeah, we enjoyed that. It got awkward sometimes, but it was very good. Oh, because it was just like two on one. And they yeah, asked you I, think, I think his wife um, sat in for like the sex part. Oh, okay. But other than that, it was just him and us. But it was good. Like, I, I we enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, What else? I'm dancing and alcohol. No. I have, no. Not at a Mennonite wedding. Is the cost shared between the families? I think I did mention that usually the bride and groom's parents would split the cost of the reception. And then it all varies from there. Like, who pays what, I would say. Yeah. Which you were asking about alcohol and drinking. Like, the most scandalous thing, I would say, that happens at receptions is... um. Well, at my wedding, it was like we were not allowed to feed each other cake. That would have been way too scandalous. So really, we you weren't snuck allowed to each other some cake. But some Mennonite weddings I've been to, this is like the most scandalous it gets. People tap glasses. Oh yeah, tapping the to, glasses. Did the people do that at your wedding? I don't think so. I don't remember. More like we a little bit more liberal than us. I would say that's pretty common. Like I've been to plenty of weddings oh, where yeah. they tap the glasses and yeah. they kiss. It's sweet. It's cute. Whatever. If it was me. I was such a like. Shy well, they actually want you. It. That is one reception rule I forgot about. They actually make you make an announcement that there's not any tapping on the glasses. Because we wouldn't want any PDA. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's just. I don't necessarily even think it's about the kissing. I think it's just more of like. It gets rowdy. Or yeah, something. and like just a respect thing too, I don't, yeah. uh, and just tradition. You know, it's it's all about tradition. We had while she finds another question. We gave out favors at our wedding, and it was cotton candy. And the cotton, we made the cotton candy all ourselves, and then overnight it got flat. So the next day we had to make it all again. Um, we'd made it Thursday, and then by Friday it was flat. What? Nothing. 99 cents? I said Bridezilla. It was like five. Oh, okay. <laughs> so say we spent like 10 cents per guest, so I was pretty proud of myself. Oh, we did rock cotton candy. candy. Rock candy? Yeah. We did cotton candy, because but yeah. love is strong. Oh my, well, <laughs> love is fluffy. Cotton candy. <laughs> love is sweet um okay another question are non-mennonites allowed to attend mennonite weddings yes absolutely oh yeah mm-hmm. 
Um, if you are ever invited to a Mennonite wedding and you don't know what to do, just follow the crowd. Just blend in and if people stand, stand. If people yeah, kneel, that kneel. Hard. Like, you'll be fine. Also, someone asked, um, or did the dresses have to be homemade? No. Unless your church requires you to wear a cape dress, then yes. But because you can't like, buy a cape both dress. Both of my sisters bought their dresses. I did not because at the time I wore a cape dress, so my mom made it. A cape is like, you'll see pictures if you go over on Honey, I'm Homemaker on Instagram, plug, plug, plug. Um, a cape is just like an extra piece of fabric in the front and the back of your bodice. Yeah. I don't know. Extra layer of modesty, That's I guess. Right. Yeah. Rehearsal dinner, yes, but it's pretty low key. I would oh, yeah, say it's not most like, of the time it's more like a big snack. There's after no the speeches, rehearsal. It's yeah, like no, big, it's not it's not like what you're picturing. You're not dumping money into that either. Yeah, no. Yeah. And that's something the groom's parents or the bride's parents usually covers. I think traditionally the groom's parents, but it's it's not like what you're thinking. It's just you go over the ceremony one time and then you have a snack and everyone goes home. We actually did uh lanterns, Chinese lanterns. Oh, at oh, our that's wedding. Sweet uh rehearsal yeah but yeah nothing nothing too special it is crazy though too like the rules that you're not allowed to have then it's just like if you want to like depending what your attitude is you can just pour all kinds of like attention into the things you are allowed to have like people had like lavish like sign-in things or like you know like when you sign in at like the guest register yeah you know like i people had like crazy stuff or like for our like my wedding when people came to the reception there's like usually appetizers like people have crazy lavish appetizer spreads or whatever i didn't i had very it was lemonade and and pretzels because it was like a 95 degree day i don't know right um but then one thing i did was i had a crazy like photo display with like old doors and i think that's where i was a bridezilla and the fact that i made my parents like haul all those antiques and shabby chic doors and like all that stuff out again but in my defense i was i had a very ugly reception space like it was completely well i mean is yoders really any better though well it's at least wedding it's a little dressier i mean it's at least formal Uh, other some people ask um how many people attended the wedding and my mom's little documents said 195 to 200 and i think it was closer it was less than 200 people yeah i think we maybe invited 250 but then Till it was all said and done, it was less than 200. Yeah, we were dumb. We invited 350, and I think our attendance was 310, which if I would do that again, I would have like a 90-person wedding. I think that sounds so intimate. I don't think we could have gotten much. Like, we tried to make it as small as possible. Yeah, and, I, like, I don't know. Eric, no, like, I wanted mine as big as possible. Like, invite everybody I knew and, like, whatever. Yeah, and, like, no, Josh's family, he has 18 aunts and uncles just on the one side and 12 on the other. So family was a huge yeah. section of it. I didn't even know half the people at my wedding because it was all Josh's cousins I hadn't met more than twice. I you knew know. I knew most of the people except for maybe some of Eric's aunts and uncles. But yeah, it is kind of tradition to invite all your aunts and uncles. Um, you don't necessarily you don't invite all your cousins because we have hundreds. But the ones your age. The ones your age are the ones that you are close to. Yeah, we tried to keep it as small as possible, but when you have big families, it's just not really possible to get it much lower than yeah. one fifty. Yeah. Oh, is there an equivalent of a sacrament, like communion? No, we don't do anything like that. Which I think is cool. Some do. I've actually heard of people, like, washing each other's feet and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I just would probably make that awkward, too. <laughs> and there's no wedding season. Like, Amish have, have a wedding season, but there's not in, yeah, our, Saturdays, in our setting. Sometimes Friday nights. but it's Yeah, but Saturdays. it's not, like, always in the fall. No, oh, no. It's like, year-round. Yeah. Yeah. Our weddings, at least my wedding, we did not say personalized vows, we just had, like, they said, do you honor, like, they read stuff off and then you say, I do, yes, yes I will. All I that do, stuff. I am, I will. Yeah. So Josh and I, what we did, since we weren't allowed to read our own personal vows at the wedding, we wrote our own vows and we read them to each other while the photographer was getting set up at the photography place. And so she took some pictures of us reading vows to each other and stuff. And so that was, like, a sweet memory. And I have that on paper and everything. Should probably re- reference them yeah. a little bit more often, but. Oh, I have a story of how. Just goes to illustrate how relaxed I was on my wedding day. I woke up in the morning after, I think, a good night's sleep. I don't remember that for sure. But I slept good, got up. I came down. I was like, okay, like, I'm ready. Like, what should I do? I don't think I had my dress on yet. But I'm pretty sure I was, like, I didn't have anything to do. And people were coming at, like, 10, 9 or 10 to take pictures. So I was up pretty early. And I was like, well, you can make lemon bars. I wanted to have, like, (laughs) some food for your friends, you know, for lunchtime. And I was like, okay, so I mixed up a batch of lemon you, bars. You dress. No, I don't think I had my dress okay. on, but I was pretty much ready if I remember. And yeah, I was just like so working in the ready, kitchen. Just you didn't like, get ready with all your girls. Well, 
I put my dress on. Like, we all, like, put our dresses on, but I think we had, like, our hair done and everything. Okay. Which we did our own hair, like. Yeah, I didn't have a makeup artist yeah. or hair person or anything. No. Yeah. No. That's so funny. You made love and bars. Yeah, I, I did. I love I'm, it. I legit was baking the That's morning of so my wedding. Funny. Just because I didn't have anything relaxed. else to do. That's and great. I had, like, nervous energy. Yeah, I did, too. Do you know what I did? I sat down and played piano. Oh, and that And my tracks. sisters all came. To, yeah, it does. My sisters all came downstairs and they just, like, stood there in a line. Three of them. And they just like looked at me. <laughs> the five, ten, and fifteen they were. And I'm like, what are you doing? I still have one head. Like, what are you looking at? They're like, they just didn't know. They're like, well, they thought I would be different. So my wedding day, or like yeah. whatever. I'm like, go away. And I just kept pounding. Nope. I was like trying to get some nervous energy out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just oh, I just remember feeling like calm and peaceful all day. And I knocked <laughs> okay, so we got married and they pronounced you man and wife and you walk out the aisle. Do you remember I knocked folding chairs? over on my way out no yeah oh, that's I, embarrassing it was but i was just like whatever it's my day i don't care <laughs> i just laughed <laughs> a snafu on our wedding day was josh wore some new cologne of some kind that i it did not smell like josh like i don't know if they actually smelled bad like i don't think so it's just that's not what he wore on yeah. our dates and it weirded me out because he's in this like suit i never see him, see him in a suit and he's wearing the wrong perfume like cologne and it was just like i felt so unsettled at first i finally got used to it or that's whatever. crazy but yeah Huh. Oh my goodness. Oh, another thing. We are oh, had to wear black shoes at the church I went to. I don't know why. It was just the rule. You gotta wear black shoes. Um, I guess for simplicity. Um, so for the ceremony, I wore my black high heels. But then, see, I was very creative and yeah, sneaky. It's yeah. just my, my rebellious heart. For our pictures, I wore lacy turquoise blue flats. Remember the flats yeah, back in style I had of the white day? Flats too. So it made my dress really long and like look like a gown and I had like a petticoat underneath to make it poof out and everything. And then I switched into my black shoes for the ceremony. And then for the reception, I wore flip-flops or like <laughs> like I don't know, I guess yeah. shoes were a thing I was into. I had like black or white slipper like flats, and people were like, Oh, your shoes look so comfortable. And that was the intention, but they were actually very uncomfortable. Oh, I think no. they were too small for me. <laughs> they were like so uncomfortable. I'm like, this is ridiculous because I chose this shoe style to be comfortable and they weren't even. <laughs> oh my goodness. But someone asked, like, what do you remember most about your wedding day besides like the fact that you got married? And I just remember clear like thinking all these people are here for me. I remember that too. I felt like a brat on my wedding day. I felt I just felt spoiled. so honored like and so humbled. I felt, yeah, humbled. That I felt all bad. these people were here and they brought us gifts. And like, it they, was just, you only get that day once. Let's hope. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just remember that feeling of just like, it, this, de- this is my day and all these people are here because yeah. they love me. And it's it was just a really neat feeling neat see i would have said it was like unsettling like i felt bad that they're here for me like they had to go get dressed up on a sunday oh, a saturday no, afternoon like, and come to my wedding like i, I appreciated bad. it i loved it so comment down below something memorable about your wedding day something that went to plan or maybe didn't i don't know it's so fun reading wedding bloopers yeah. and stuff so oh man or if nothing else if you're not married yet good luck yeah <laughs> have a mennonite wedding they're cheaper <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That's that's the takeaway from this episode. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, Bye. everyone. <laughs>